The Tumbling of Biologists is keen to enhance the open access options available to authors and readers. Our journals were in fact the first in the world to gain transformative journal status. And we're also pioneering uncapped read and publish agreements. To explore the author benefits of open access publishing through read and publish agreements, I'm meeting with one of our authors to hear more. Chris McDonald is a cell biologist at the University of York in the UK. Chris, you recently published an article in Journal of Cell Science on glucose starvation in budding yeast. Is open access important to you and do you feel it plays a particular role for earlier career researchers like yourself? Yeah, I, I definitely think it's important and a uh... You know, open access, this this new drive for open access, I think, is like a very positive thing, uh, stopping research being hidden from people. And yeah, open access articles and preprint and solve that problem. And I do think it's particularly helpful for early career researchers to do that because it helps establish, you know, the techniques you use, the research you're doing, even at an early stage which will be important to, you know, build on and kind of hopefully make a name for yourself. So I think it's a very good thing. And I believe the news about the read and publish agreement and that you could publish um, without having to pay an open access fee came as a nice surprise in the process. It, it, yeah. So, I mean, that probably, uh, I, I probably should know more about how to <laughs> go about publishing a paper, but uh, yeah. So the way I had gone about the open access charge was I'd contacted a colleague who'd published in the Journal of Cell Science recently and they had made mention that as a welcome funded researcher they, they reminded me that I, I actually need to publish everything in open access formats and the it was mentioned that there was a pool of money that that kind of went towards this and that that pool might actually be running low at the moment I, I don't really know how that works so I wasn't entirely sure how to proceed, but actually the the kind of after we got the paper accepted, the the communications from the company of biologists explained that the, there was no need to worry about that and that it was pretty much all taken care of. So yeah, so please, was, very pleased with your librarian for signing up for a, a read and publish agreement. Yeah, I, I think they said it was the first time they'd gone through it, and they were really glad that it had gone smoothly. So. Yes, it was the first paper published since we'd signed the read and publish agreement, and I believe it was the first paper from your lab. So that must have uh, felt great. Can you tell us briefly about your findings? Yes. Yeah, so uh, briefly, we we use budding yeast to investigate how surface membrane proteins are downregulated in response to glucose starvation as a, a cell survival mechanism, and we found a, a transcriptional response that that elevated this this downregulation, specifically in response to glucose starvation, and we found that this regulated the vast majority of surface proteins. However, we did find a small amount of nutrient transporters are actually retained at the surface following starvation in these special subdomains called isosomes. And the ability of cells to sequester a little reserve pool of nutrient transporters actually provided a physiological benefit. So the cells recovered from starvation quicker due to their ability to, to keep that those proteins at the surface. So that was the two different arms uh, of surface protein regulation in response to glucose starvation. Um, how was it publishing in Journal of Cell Science? Yeah, it was a, a, it was a really positive experience. Uh, we, in the lab, we were, were fans of the Journal of Cell Science, so it features heavily in journal clubs. And it was actually the, the first journal I ever co-authored a paper on as a PhD student in Nia Bryant's lab. Uh, so uh, publishing there to begin with is, is kind of cool for me because of that, but uh, it was also the entire process from getting feedback and reviews and editorial comments were all very streamlined and uh, yeah, I've no complaints at all. It was the, <laughs> the easiest of processes. And you preprinted the paper first. Yeah, so we posted it in BioArchive about uh, a year ago. Uh, and that was, I, I think, a mechanism we'll use for pretty much all, all research in the lab. It was uh, extremely uh, positive. We had a lot of feedback from different people, unexpected sources. And uh, yeah, I think it just helped, you know, 
as a new lab starting out, it helped kind of say that we had done something, even though it hadn't been published yet. Uh, so yeah, and then we went on to improve it, and then with with the help of reviewer comments and so on, we we managed to get it published. And um, and how was the process for you know claiming the um, the the fee free open access publish? Yeah, so it it was like so simple. It, it barely needs mention. I think we might have signed a piece of paper or ticked the box, but yeah, and then it was just yep, yeah, you're you're eligible uh, because of the University of York's agreement with the company of biologists. And then, yeah, that was, that was it. Perfect. So you'd recommend it to other researchers and other institutions? 100%. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and I, I see other people are, are doing it as well. So, uh, and I know people in our department, they publish in the Journal of Cell Science and Development and stuff. So I can see it having, you know, near and far reaching effects. Excellent. That's just what we want to hear. Um, we can see that open access increases the usage of our journal articles because readers have greater access to the content. And they also tend to get higher altmetric scores reflecting the online attention they receive through social media, etc. So we can see that librarians are putting in place read and publish agreements that are good for authors, good for journals and good for science. Thank you very much, Chris. Cool. Thank you.